Hi guys, welcome back to the channel on all things narcissistic and how to recover from an intimate relationship with a narcissist and to use the same type of method really to recover from any kind of narcissistic abuse. So guys, we're still doing the hoovering uh, videos and this video today is going to be about when the narcissist uses the new supply to hoover you or their old supply. So I hope this is going to be helpful. Um, thank you to anyone who's new here. And can I just mention um, that I've been getting quite a few emails and sometimes the same type of emails come in. And these emails that are coming in are from people who are finding it really, really hard to recover. They may be at the year stage. Some people are even longer. What I'll say to you is you will recover if you believe you will recover, if you keep telling yourself, I'm never going to get over this, I'm never going to heal, you won't. There's a lot of things you can do to positively make your healing, speed your healing up. But I promise you, you will heal from this if you want to. And there's techniques and things you can do to improve your chances of healing quicker but you will definitely, I tell you, when you've healed, this is like, it, sorry if it's triggering, but this is so cathartic. This is so, such a healthy process to go to eventually after narcissistic abuse, that when you come out the other side, if you put the work in, you'll nearly thank the narcissist. You'll nearly, not quite. It's yourself you'll thank because you'll put the work in. But having to deal with the issues that arise out of it will greatly enhance you as a person. And you get your excitement back about life. You get your peace back with an even enhanced state. So please stick with this process. Also, a lot of people have said that, look, I've been going to counselling. I've had loads of sessions and I'm still no better. Sometimes, as we know, therapists and counsellors, brilliant as they are, are not, haven't maybe gone through the experience of narcissistic abuse or aren't that well up on that particular personality disorder and what it's like for a target or a victim to go through it and to have to rebuild themselves after it. So look, it's all for another video. I, I don't want to get sidetracked, guys. But what I would say about that is consider coaching. Consider someone who's been through it, who has a fair handle on what you're going through. Um, and anyone that wants coaching, I'm available for coaching. And the email is narxcon at gmail.com. Now, to get into this video about the narcissist hoovering their old supply using a new supply, using their new the person in their lives, the new person in their lives, their new intimate partner. Guys, what I'm going to do to approach this with the kind permission of one of our, our community, I'm going to read out an email and kind of dissect it as we go along that this person has sent to me. And I'm dissecting it in the light of what's actually what is actually going on um, what the narcissist is up to and what they're doing in this email and give a few pointers in relation to what maybe the person should have not done or could have not done. Um, but it's so tempting to, to re-engage sometimes and you'll see that where the temptation comes from in this email. So, yeah, let's get into that. And the other thing I would say, though, beforehand is narcissists, there's never one person for a narcissist. You see, it is never about you. It's never about the other person. It's always about the narcissist's journey through life. And they will have multiple people because they never want to be left alone. So they have open ended relationships and even open relationships while they're with you. They'll be cheating or grooming other people or triangulating you with the old supply or you with the new supply or the new supply with you. It's always there's never a beginning and an end with a narcissist. They always 
if they have one relationship here and they'll start another relationship on top of that, then with this relationship, they'll start another relationship on top of that. So they never end a relationship before they begin another. And even if you think they do and say to me, Paula, no, that's not true. My narcissist was on his own for a good few years after we broke up. You don't know that. You actually don't know that. Narcissists are fantastic at image perception and image management. And they would not want you to know that because that would kind of end, maybe end your torture a bit if your torture is based on maybe them coming back to you and you believe there's nobody else there and you keep the hope that they'll come back to you. There's various reasons that narcissists do things. Sorry, that's Remy in the background. <laughs> Remy, did you want to say something? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so narcissists don't do beginnings and ends. Um, they do discards, but they don't, uh, they don't close off relationships. Everybody is a source of supply to the narcissist. So they will kind of put you to the side while they're dealing with somebody else and then re-engage you during that relationship. And that's exactly what's happened in this email. So without further ado, let's read the email and see and see what this, how this transition, how this situation transpired that the narcissist used his current partner to hoover his former partner back into engaging with the narcissist. And by the looks of things, he would want the relationship to be rekindled. But this person in our community is firm that she will not do that. So this was in response to video suggestions as well. So sorry, guys, if there's a reflection on the glasses, I just need them for reading. So it's, hi Paula, I hope you are well. I wonder if you would consider doing a video on something that recently happened to me. So, my ex narcs new girlfriend of about four months, and in brackets, though I knew he was grooming her well before. There you have the overlapping of the relationships. Got in touch with me two weeks ago. I figured she must have been pretty desperate to get in touch with me. I've known her a few years and we have some mutual friends. She wasn't really my friend, but his, though they've always had a bit of a toxic friendship. Now they are together as a couple, and in brackets, after his attempted hoovers on me didn't work. I am not jealous or bothered. They are both addicts and work together and he stays at hers across the road from their workplace but pays no rent or money towards bills or shopping. Oftentimes narcissists will really be big into the residual benefits and it's from this email the narcissist was not successful at the first two attempts of his old supply so he is in a relationship with this person he knew as a friend who he was grooming while he was still with. He was still with you who's writing the email here. So this is very narcissistic. OK. So she is not a patch on me, I have to say, and that means he's downgraded and you're self-aware enough to see that. And she has been quite vindictive and spiteful over the last couple of months. Even others have noticed. I just shrug it off and try not to let her, and inverted, in inverted commas, or him, mess with my newfound positivity and peace. I am secure enough not to let her childish Facebook comments or emojis affect me. Though I do sometimes feel hurt by it, because she is trying to ridicule me. And I know you're all saying, what's the advice here? And the advice here is to block this person from your Facebook. You block the narcissist's new supply as well as the narcissist. So you don't even have to test yourself with this because the narcissist will try and hoover with the new supply. Always keep that in mind as a strong 
possibility, particularly if you have, you know, you have mutual, a kind of a mutual social circle. It transpires that they had a huge violent fight that night, possibly one of many prior to this. And she messaged me asking if he was mean and abusive to me and made me feel like crap about myself. Now, you've, you're on your healing journey. You do not need anybody who's going to make you feel crap about yourself. You're doing the work. You don't need anyone to put you down or get into any kind of a relationship with a person who's vindictive, abusive and toxic. So this is interesting the way it's going. I said yes and gave her a few pointers after thinking long and hard if I should reply. It's so tempting, guys, to reply. You know, you're empathic. You want to help out. Somebody's called you looking for help and they're in distress and you know what they're going through. This is not a good idea for you on your healing journey. And I know in retrospect, you can say, I wish I hadn't, you know, I wish I hadn't actually taken the call or replied. But if if you're if they're blocked, then you don't have that temptation. If you know that you're a type of person that wants to help out and that feels great empathy. If you know that 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 is a strength, but a weakness in this situation, have them blocked. I wrote quite a lot about the warning signs, narc abuse, etc. And she responded to say that she didn't really know what to do. Now, it's definitely not our place to tell the new supply what to do or to get involved with them. We have to look after ourselves and they have to look after themselves too. It is kind to share your information about narcissistic abuse. And sometimes we're so, my God, you know, we've got this knowledge and this person doesn't know. And it's understandable you'd want to share it with them. But maybe a way around that would be to maybe share a video on your Facebook or something like that or give the information to a mutual friend to pass on without you getting involved if you really, really feel that you wanted to help that person out. But in the minute, don't do it in the minute. Also give yourself time to reflect on it and, you know, respond in a few days' time maybe. But again, the author of the email did think long and hard about it but she was her empathy got her to act and to actually try and help out. She said that he doesn't really seem to want to be with her and that all he talks about is how to get me jealous. So this narcissist is actually triangulating his new supply with his old supply and trying to get her to team up with him to get at the author of the email, to get at his old supply. The next day, she changed her profile picture back to the two of them and bought him his dream present. I know the violence and emotional abuse isn't a lie because it's been confirmed by others. So this new person that the narcissist's with, this new intimate partner, is putting up with a lot of emo emotional abuse, reached out to get help, because she was so desperate and the narcissist was obviously always talking about the author of the email and she, he, he was always bringing, narcissists will always bring their old supply up to the new supply or very, very, it's, it's a general kind of a thing they do, even if 10% if of them don't, most of them do and you get so involved in hearing about the old supply, you kind of nearly feel you know them. And then if you get so desperate with the, what the narcissist is doing, you may reach out to the old supply being the new supply. But the narcissist knows this. The narcissist has you as a kind of a, the three of you as a triangle. So you feel nearly like you're in a relationship with the old supply as well. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of an obvious thing for you to do when you're desperate and being emotionally abused to reach out to the other person in the triangle. Anyway, a week later, he messages me quite, quite 
threateningly to say he knows what I've said and done and in inverted commas, rub rubbish, he's bluffing. Called me spiteful and manipulative. Manipulative. Projection in its essence. Telling me that I cannot break him or get between them and he promises me if I carry on, he will tell everyone and show everyone. He will go on a big smear campaign, threatening manipulative behavior on the narcissist's part. That thou doth protest too much, methinks. I knew he was bluffing. Either way, I replied a few hours later with, yes, tell everyone, how your current girlfriend messaged your ex-girlfriend asking for advice on how to manage your drunken, abusive behaviour. Do not threaten me with something. I am quite happy to get out into the open. Now, yes, you replied. You replied to him and you see how you've been drawn in, how the Hoover has actually worked how he used the communication between his current supply and you, his old supply, to have a valid excuse to contact you and how you then become entangled with the, the narcissist's new relationship. But that's not why he is actually communicating with you. He wants you back communicating with him so he has a chance to hoover you, to draw you back in, to get you involved with his life and to have a chance to get back with you. And all his other hoover attempts have failed. So this is his new style of re-engaging with you and getting you re-engaged through the distress of his current girlfriend knowing that you would be empathic, knowing that she would reach out to you at some stage. This guy is highly manipulative. He's going around the bushes to find out the best way to get you hoovered, you who have blocked every other attempt at him hoovering you. So he's gone, he's kind of using a third party and he, he's using the new supply. So it's kind of a hoover by proxy, but it's a hoover by triangulation and with the new supply. So, okay, so you sent him the text back saying that you're quite happy to get it out in the open. He then replied straight away with an apology text saying the text last night at 1.30 a.m. was a reaction to finding out we'd been in touch, that he was sorry and sorry for threatening me, that they had shared responsibility for the instance and have dealt with matters. And in inverted commas, I knew at this point he'd not seen any messages and was surmising as she wasn't the one who told me about the violence. So he was bluffing. He said that his ex, his sorry, his current girlfriend had told the author of the email, his old supply about the violence, but she hadn't. She's too sh savvy to show him the messages that we had both deleted on sent. I was actually so disappointed, though. She'd thrown me right under the bus here. So remember the person, the new supply who's with the narcissist is so glad to get the narcissist back on board um, that they're going to just throw you who have given them help under the bus because the narcissist is promising, you know, that the relationship's going to be okay, that the two of them need to work things out and, you know, not to be going back to... to to the old supply or to involve anyone else in it. So at that stage, the new supply is quite willing to throw anyone that's helped them under the bus because they're so addicted to the narcissist and also want to make the relationship work. Also the element of jealousy there, the new supply is very jealous of the old supply because the narcissist has made it so, has vamped the whole thing up in a very 
fake way and you know the narcissist is then telling the new supply that they won't have anything else to do with the old supply and the jealous the jealousy kind of element has come up and again the desperation of the new supply is all forgotten about and she's quite willing to throw the author of the email here under the bus okay uh, just let me find my place she's yeah i tried to contact her to see if she was okay what happened to warn her etc she messaged me and said that she'd been honest with him when he saw my chat head come up on her facebook and told him that we had been in touch and that he wanted to see the messages he wasn't very pleased about it all but she said it's all cleared up and he won't message me again so he's promised that all is going to be rosy in the garden with the new supply and that they won't have to involve the old supply again. I wish I hadn't got involved, Paula. Tried to help, stroke, support. Silly empath that I am. You're not a silly empath. It's the natural, the natural reaction to help a person in deep distress, but there is no saving that person until they want to save themselves. Hopefully she will have remembered some of the things you've said and hopefully she will get help herself, but you are not the person to help her. Her friends, her family, or she needs to, to want to help herself. And th that stage will come when the narcissist will devalue her again and will bring you up again uh, and flaunt you in her face and probably give out to her again for contacting you, even though he's been triangulating the new supply with you all the time. It's insidious. It's the narcissist getting control over two people. It's a method of hoovering and it's a method of triangulating. It is all things narcissistic. It's a game. It's vindictive. It's abusive. And it's disgusting, but it's the narcissist always in a transitory phase with people. The narcissist is always putting themselves first and is getting you both to emotionally regulate them. Most of the videos I see about new supply do not apply to me as they are usually about new people in the narc's life. This lady is someone I know and we're all in the same scene though I have managed to avoid them up to now. I haven't seen either of them for months. He is still blocked and she deleted me off Facebook, but she's definitely threatened by me and in inverted commas, possibly due to the triangulation tactics. Most certainly, most certainly. But instead now of her deleting you, you deleting her, and this is for every, this is fantastic information, Thank you for allowing me to read it out. You know who you are. This is just a prime example of how the narcissist uses the new supply. And it's a prime example of why you need to block the narcissist and their new supply just in case, particularly if they know of you and you know of them or there's been some interaction between you. I also know he has been lying about me to people in the workplace and still will not let it go, slagging me off and stalking me on Facebook. He just cannot stand to see me doing so well, me being talked up by others. He is so, so jealous of me and I don't know why. Nor do I know why he continually tries to get me jealous or to provoke a reaction. It's totally for supply. He is, I mean, he's only been four months in the relationship with the new supply and he's already doing a huge amount of devaluation, devaluation on her. It's a very quick devaluation. He is, he has tried to hoover you on, hoover you on successfully and he's now using a new tactic of using the new supply to hoover you, trying to get you jealous as a new tactic to get you back. Remember, he wants you back to discard you again because he's seeing you do so well and he hasn't managed 
to break you and that will threaten his control hugely particularly if you're in a similar circle and people are saying how well you're doing you aren't allowed you know you aren't allowed to even survive the relationship you are not allowed to be happy after a narcissist has left you because that threatens their image of themselves as being all powerful omnipotent all desirable and uh, superior to you you are threatening the narcissist's control by showing strength endurance um rejection of them when they try to hoover and you're showing a superiority that is totally threatening the narcissist's control. So yes, the more you're in their circle and the more they see you doing well, the more they will try to get a reaction from you. So you can close it down by blocking them and blocking anyone associated with them. So that's my answer on that. You're really threatening his control and the way he sees himself and the way he has to appear to others. You know, that the ideal scenario for the narcissist is you chasing the narcissist and him going, she's crazy. You know, I can't be doing with that. Um, I'm way too important to deal with someone that's got that many issues. Instead, you more or less left the narcissist. You know, you more or less rejected the narcissist. And that does not look good for the narcissist's image within the community. They're not normal. They can't just go and say, oh, well, it didn't work out between us. They have to be the ones going off and, you you know, having someone chase them. I am doing so well. I am feeling great and have lost 2.5 stone. And I'm heavily involved with my music gigs, raising my daughter and finishing off my advanced study. That's my girl. That's what we need to do. Everyone has noticed and it feels wonderful. Getting rid of him is the best thing I did. I think this is me gone supernova. Surely supernova is is a kind of an event, but you you're extending you're extending the spirit of the event in your success. Neither of them, however, are letting me go quietly. No, you are threatening the two of them because they are in a very argumentative, abusive relationship that they're sharing together and they're feeling very disempowered by your empowerment. Please, can you do a video on the new supply approaching the ex-girlfriend and what you advise to do, whether we know the new supply or whether it's a new person? Sorry for the long email, but I had to give context. Thanks, Paula. You take care. You take care and thank you for allowing me share your experience of your Hoover with the new supply. Guys, it's a long video. I hope it's been of help. Block, block and block. All toxicity around all toxic people around the narcissist and the narcissist themselves. And you go on to do what this person has done. And she is so glad that she's out of that relationship and she's empowering herself. She's a new life. And I'm quite sure at some stage she will meet a person who deserves her. God bless. I'll be back soon. Take great care, guys. Bye for now.